right, welcome. Um, my talk called Ansible Project Deploy. Uh, because of the vagueness of the title, I have a subtitle, uh, a reusable Ansible role to deploy your project. Any questions so far? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Good question. All right. Before we begin, a little bit about me, except that I'm always late. Um, my name, Ramon de la Fuente. And um, as much as I'd like to tell you my Twitter handle, uh, I thought I was being clever at the time, but it's unpronounceable. So <laughs> there you have it. Uh, I. Uh, wor I'm working with PHP for 15 years now, uh, the last eight of which I've uh, run my own company called Future 500. Uh, we're based in Zutemir. Uh, four developers also hiring, so anyone interested, talk to me. Um, and in, uh, I also run a PHP user group in, in Zutemir called Sweet Lake PHP. Um, in my spare time, I also have a family. Um, <laughs> so. Yeah, exactly. What's this? <laughs> um, before we start deploying stuff with Ansible, uh, let's look at why Ansible in the first place. Sorry, what was that? Because it's awesome. Yes, because it's awesome. Well, actually, not really. Because it's easy. <laughs> That's my first thing. Um, Michael Hahn wrote Ansible because <laughs> none of the existing tools fit my brain which was my sentiment exactly when I tried Puppet. Anybody else try Puppet? Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, salt stack. And all right. So easy, right? Um, um, built with, uh, well, there's no unnecessary complexity at first. There is no agent. So you're not installing anything on the other side. You're just uh, running it from your own machine. If you have SSH access and Python, it's not really necessary, but still, uh, then you can use it, which, well, it's very, very nice. Um, it's built for reuse and sharing, which is the part that we really like. There's a uh, Ansible Galaxy, which is a place where you can share your roles that you've built and reuse them between projects. Um, and it's extensible in your own, extendable in your own language, um, which is a feature because Ansible copies a module over to the remote machine and runs it, you don't really need to write your modules in Python if you're even writing uh, modules. But we've never used this because Python is actually a very, very nice language. So, but it is a, it is a feature. If you, if you want to do some modules in PHP, you can. There are some good blog posts about that. So now we can start deploying. Oh, well, not yet. Um, what is deploying? What's the problem that we're trying to solve? Right? Um, for us, uh, we wanted continuous deployment. We want to deploy our project with a press on of a button and be sure that it gets deployed or that it fails um, and that doesn't disturb our production environment. Um, besides being able to do that, um, we also want to be able to maintain that process, not just build it and have it work, but be able to adapt that quite easily because most of the tools are um, if you build them, they will work, but then they're a, a pain to, to alter. So it should be really, really easy to maintain. Um, besides being easy to maintain, once you understand the tool, because usually you have this learning curve and then you know how it works, but then um, you have to tell how it works, explain how it works to a new team member, and that becomes a pain. So it should be a, real, a tool with a real low uh, learning curve that you can explain to anyone because these deploy processes change with code, right? You have a, a, a configuration file that gets deployed and you change something in your application that requires a configuration and you want that change in, um, in, in, in the code and the change in configuration to be in the same commit as the, the, uh, as the deployment change. So it needs a small learning curve and then after you've set it up for one project, it should be real easy and painless to reuse that on a different project. So those are the things, that's the problem we're trying to solve. And I've been using the word deploy, but before we start deploying, let's talk a little bit about what a deploy really is. I'll go through the directory structure that we use and the people who use 
Capistrano. Who, who you here uses Capistrano or knows about it? All right, a handful. Who here uses Ansible for, uh, you know, whatever, uh, provisioning? Yeah? All right. How many use it for deploys? Couple. Any of you use the role that I'm talking about? I'm going to talk about? Okay. I'm going to do a talk one day where somebody uses the role. <laughs> <laughs> That's the goal. Okay, the directory structure. You have three folders, three main folders. These are releases, um, shared, and source. The releases folder contains a timestamped folder for each release that you do. So uh, every time you do a new release, a new folder will, will uh, appear in the releases folder, and that will contain your current release, the one that you're doing. The shared folder contains stuff that needs to survive between two releases. Um, because not everything needs to be replaced. You, you want to replace the source code, but not the session files or the uploaded files by the user. Um, then there's a, 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 a source folder inside shared in this case. Um, this contains the source code for your project. And we use this to update, update the source and not get the entire code base from GitHub or uh, any remote that you use every, every release. So you have a place where your code gets updated. Um, and then there's current. And current is just a symlink that points to one of the releases. So if a deploy is done, your release folder is up to date and everything looks fine, then the symlink gets replaced and your current is now the new release. So there's a couple of steps in there. Um, the first of which is updating the code base and the configuration. Um, the, you want the correct version of your code, so you want to deploy a certain, um, uh, well, a, a tag or a release. Um, and after that, you want the configuration to be to reflect the the, the the environment that you're deploying. That would be like staging or production. So that's the first step. After that, you install your dependencies. The um, a composer comes to mind, but uh, there's also npm and Bower and um, you know, pip and whatnot. If you use tools in different languages, you're going to have different um, dependencies to install. Uh, next up, you you have a, a release folder and the code's up to date, but now you want these shared resources to to persist. You want the um, in this case your symlinks from the release folder to point to the shared folder, and you want that consistently. Um, after that, well, I've talked about the session files and the uploaded user files, right? These are logical things, but there are more things that you could place in there. The step four is build tasks, and the build tasks are uh, stuff like less and SAS compiling, um, uh, grunt, um, uh, name a few, gurgle burp, I'm not sure. There are all these JavaScript things that do stuff, and they do build steps. <laughs> <laughs> There's one coming, I'm sure, I'm sure. <laughs> There's grunt, gulp, and, well, whatever. Every month a new flavor. <laughs> Wait for it. Let me just get the domain in your lifetime. And step five, <laughs> heard it here first, yeah. Step, step five is finalized, which is basically just pointing the sim link to the new release. Um, so all these steps and the things I've talked about, there's a role for that. And this is it. Um, this is the role on Ansible, uh, Ansible Galaxy, which means it's uh, shared. Anyone can use it. And it will, it will perform the steps for you. And I'll run you through the code now. Um, but first, let's see how you get this if you are not familiar with Ansible Galaxy. So getting the role. Um, First off, you run a Ansible Galaxy command. So this command on the, on the command line says install uh, f500.project uh, underscore deploy. It adds a version uh, for people who, um, who are unfamiliar with, uh, with Ansible Galaxy. I, it's not in any of the documentation that you can add them this way or not in the recommended. Uh, way of doing things, but we do this because, you know, versions and breaking things and um, if you don't want to get the role with one command, you can use a Galaxy uh, roles file that, um, that defines all the roles that you need. This is an example. There is a new format available, because this is a, just a text file with a new role on every line. 
Um, there's a new format available in YAML, surprise, surprise. Um, <laughs> it's Ansible after all. Um, but I'm not sure what extra that could do for you, so I haven't put it in the slides yet. Interesting. I read Mark that marks nothing. Well, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Don't edit your slides on the, on the last day. Um, the role walkthrough. This is the code for the role itself. So this is the Ansible code that's inside the role. If you're just going to use the role for deploys, you don't really have to know all the code. But I'll walk you through the steps, because if the role is not a perfect fit, you can write your own role, but then still use the module that we've written that eases some of the steps. And the, the module is called deploy underscore helper. Um, it's a module in Ansible Galaxy as well for the, for the time being, so you can already use it. But it's hopefully going to go into um, the Ansible modules extra. Uh, I, uh, it's been there for a couple of months now, and I just on the way over, I saw the final uh, uh, um, response that they're going to review it soon. <laughs> so who knows? Um, yeah, well <laughs> with my speed, who knows? Well, anyway, it's, if it goes to core, then you can use it out of the box. But for now, you can use it if you, if you get it from Galaxy. This runs the module, and it will make the, the directory for you. So the, the project directory, the root on the other side, uh, where, you are, where you are deploying to. Besides making the directory, um, it will also gather a couple of facts. And facts are just like variables in Ansible, stuff you can use. And these are the variables that are created. It's a, it's, it's a list. Most of them are paired because they are uh, variables and then also the complete path for that variable. And most of them are just paths. But one is really interesting. And that's the timestamp for uh, the new release, which the modu module creates for you. If you're doing deploys with Ansible, you've probably found out that creating a timestamp and saving it and using it later takes a couple of tasks, which was annoying. So now the module does that for you. And you see on the, on, the, on the bottom line, you see how to use these facts, which is just the name of the module, dot, and then the name of the variable you want to use. So step one, updating the code base. So let's match that to the code that's in the, in, in the, in the role. Uh, first up, we're updating the code base, so we're getting it from somewhere. And you'll see here there are two strategies, actually, as of last week, three strategies that you can use to get your code from. One is Git, and the other is Synchronize, which is just copying it from your local machine to remote. And the third one now is S3. Who here keeps his code on S3? Oh, there we go. One uh, <laughs> possible user. All right. Um, OK, so you set the variable project deploy strategy to one of these, and that will give you um, uh, the either the first block or the second block. And you'll see here there's a project version. If you're using Git, you have to deploy something, right? So that's probably a tag that you've uh, created to deploy your software. <laughs> yeah, why not? Master, head. Uh, uh, um, let's see. Um, after you've updated the code base, then this just goes to the source file, right, in the, in the shared folder. So there are a couple of tasks that copy the source folder over to the new release folder. Because that means that we're saving time by not getting the entire uh, code base from Git into a release folder, but we're getting into the source folder and copying it over. And in copying, we also want to remove some stuff, like the .git folder, which shouldn't float around in production. So um, that gets deleted. Also, I've heard from a reasonably reliable source on Composer that you shouldn't run stuff on production and keep your source code on production. So <laughs> and there, there he is. <laughs> uh, you could use the deploy role to deploy to a staging server and then uh, copy it from there. So. All right. Uh, step one also included updating your configuration files. And here are two variables. So the, the red lines underline some variables that you set when you're just using this role. The project files and the project templates, which just wrap around the files and the template module in Ansible. So it's a list of files that you want to copy or a list of templates that you want on the other side. 
So step two, installing dependencies. And I've named a few dependency managers like uh, Composer and NPM and Bower. The role supports all three um, and doesn't run them by default. So if you have Composer, you set one variable called project has Composer. You set that to true or true-ish in Ansible. So that's like one or on or yes or hell yes or give it to me. Um, and that will run Composer. Um, or NPM or Bower, whichever you set. And if you don't agree with our default for the command that is run when Composer is run, because we don't use the scripts and we um, uh, optimize autoload, for example, then you can change the command that is used. Because these variables have defaults inside the defaults folder for the role, but you can override those. So your dependencies are now installed. Um, and you have, so your code base is up to date, and your, uh, your, your, your configuration is OK. Your dependencies are installed. Shared resources. Um, these are just sim links, right? So these three tasks do nothing but delete whatever's, whatever you point to in your release, um, create whatever it's pointing to inside the shared folder, and create the sim link between the two. So it's just a list of from to. Uh, but it's really easy because it's just configuration. It will, it will do this for you every time. So step four was build steps. We, we had a couple of current and maybe future um, build tools. We don't know what the build tools are. So in this role, we make no assumptions about your build tools. All we did was make a, um, a variable that's a list of commands that you want to run on the other side. And because this is a, a little more vague than, than the, the, the variables that we did before, here's an example. You can run, uh, this is an example from, uh, from Symfony. You run a cache clear, an assets install, and a acetic dump, for example. Um, this is just a list that gets executed by the command module on the other side. So then we go to step five which is finalize, and that's just replacing the sim link. But as you can see, there's a variable that um, checks if you really want to finalize. Because it might be that, you, that what you want to do doesn't really fit into our five-step plan. Right? So you have four steps, and then the fifth step, the finalize, isn't run. And the fifth step is actually just a deploy helper that's being called. It has a state finalized. It does a little more than just replace the sim link. I'll get into that in a minute. But if you set the project um, a finalized variable to false, then you won't replace the sim link. So everything will be up to date and ready to go, except for the sim link, which leaves room for, for example, database schema updates, which we also don't make uh, any assumptions about what you're using. Um, we use doc, uh, Doctor Migrate, for example, uh, Doctor Migrations, but it could be anything really, and any database. So it really didn't feel prudent to add some tasks and then add a lot of options that said, okay, I want to do this to do that. You just don't finish the role and add a second role after that in your playbook that will do these steps for you. Um, the deploy helper is, is called here uh, with a state is finalized, which removes, uh, which moves the sim link. But after that, there's also a little bit of maintenance that you want to do usually, because you don't want these releases in the release folder to pile up. So you want to clean up the releases folder and have a couple of good releases that you keep. And the deploy module will do this for you. You can add a variable that says, I want to keep five. It's, uh, it's five by default. But if you want to change that to something else, you can. And it will clean that up inside one single task. And if you, even if you don't <coughs> finalize with the, the role that we have, then you add your, set, your, your role after that. And then in your role, you can do a, um, a deploy helper status finalize. And it will do exactly the same thing. Um, so that saves a bunch of tasks that you have to write and a bunch of checking that you want to do because finding directories and listing them and keeping them in a variable in Ansible is, well, iffy, headache. And in a module, it's real simple because that's Python. So there's one other thing. I, th I think I skipped over that. Um, but there is a file that is created during the um, the, the release process. And this file is called build unfinished. 
or whatever you want to set it to, but by default build unfinished, and it gets copied into the release folder, which means that Ansible or the role will know when your release hasn't finished yet, when it fails, because um, you, you don't want your cleanup process to clean up builds that were successful, but then leave five failed builds, and then you'll have no place to go back to. Right? So this is all the code that's in the, in, in the task. So, um, sorry, in the role. This one's actually for me. Uh, that was a lot of code, right? Or at least a lot of code slides, which brings people to sleep. But the, 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 the role itself is not complicated. There are uh, 98 lines of code, 22 tasks, probably a bit more since last week, and 28 variables that you can use. It's quite easy, anyone can, anyone can do that. Right? So these are the numbers again, to repeat. 98 lines, oh no, sorry, that's also boring. Um, <laughs> let's look at how to use this. The minimal playbook that you can write to deploy software with this role, is you have to set the minimum number of variables. We use Git, so, um, that's a version and the, the Git repository. And you have to add your our role to the role section, otherwise it wouldn't run. So a minimal playbook looks like this. This will deploy software. Um, not very well, I grant you, because <laughs> there is no composer, uh, there are no build steps, so probably this wouldn't fit. But this is, this is the minimal example. To go to an actual example uh, that we use in production for this, it's the Sweet Lake PHP, um, the Sweet Lake PHP uh, project, which is a Symphony project, and this is the deploy uh, configuration or the playbook uh, using the role that we wrote. So the start ex is exactly the same, right? We have um, the where does it come from? So, uh, and we have the user, which is now a variable, but that's just uh, because if you use it in different projects, it's easier to make that configurable. Um, there's where does it come from, which it comes from Git. So far, it's the same. So what happens then? Uh, this is a, a variable that you can set that will allow you to set environment for the commands that are run. So you saw the example with the build, st um, the build steps. Uh, acetic dump and the uh, the cache clear. You need the environment for that, so you can set that. Um, next up, there is the shared children. I told you that's just a list of things from and to. And here you see that list. There's a path for app sessions, and that will go to the shared folder sessions. Um, same for the uploads. Project templates, well, the configuration file. So the, uh, this is just the, the param parameters file that you want to copy to the other side, but it's a template, so it has some variables that need to be replaced. That's quite straightforward. Obviously, we have Composer. Um, so that just runs Composer with the default command. And uh, because it runs with no scripts, we added some of the scripts to our uh, post-build commands. Um, and adding the role. This is also the required bit. If you, uh, if you don't do this, nothing happens. For those who have paid attention, um, I hope some of you at least have paid attention, let's see, to this bit. Uh, I see someone nodding his head anymore. We run our Dr. Migrations Migrate. Uh, before. Well, not exactly, yeah, before the, well, there's nothing else that can go wrong. Well, there's the two, other build steps that can go wrong, so that's already iffy. We, we don't that's recommend, possible. yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> we don't recommend doing it this way. Uh, this is just uh, laziness. There's two, two um, I'd say there's two reasons uh, how you, when you would do it this way. It's like either one, you're an extremely lucky person, which I'm not, and the other is if you have absolutely no visitors on your website, which is the case with Sweet Lake PHP. So, <laughs> We don't feel uh, that bad about it. Also, we don't write stuff that can be uh, 
turned back, which means we, we try to fill forward. When we, we don't rename a column, we add a column, migrate the data, and leave the old column there. If it hasn't been used for one release, then it can be deleted. Mm -hmm. right? There's more stuff like that that you can use to be really... So the migrated data does completely work to delete them with the old cell? Yes. yes. If, yeah. If, even if you migrate, it will still work with the well previous release. You can't just go, but the previous release or the one that's currently online will still work, which is a safe way to look to 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 look at that, or a safer way. You would still probably not do this without either um, uh, some sort of maintenance mode, because that's also something that we do not assume that we know which web server you're using or how you turn your application on and off. Uh, but you do have places. To, to put those commands in. So um, what we call this is fingers crossed deployment. <laughs> uh, so far, uh, it hasn't failed that often. <laughs> Not more often than the, than the Amsterdam PHP raffler. <laughs> had to do it, had to do it. <laughs> so that's monthly. I told you a lot about what it does. It's been a long story so far, but what doesn't it do? Because this is uh, pretty important. Um, it doesn't do rollbacks. People who come from Capistrano often ask for this. This role doesn't do rollbacks. Because um, Ansible isn't built that way. It doesn't like having to go back to something that was there. And the second thing that I really dislike about Capistrano is when it fails, it will delete the release it was, do, it, would, it was doing for you. So what went wrong? Well, I have this error message, but I don't really know. In this case, um, a, a release folder is in your releases. It's not being used, but something went wrong. Ansible just fails and quits. You have the opportunity to check out this release folder and see what, sorry? Yeah, do a postmortem. Yeah, no, nice expression. Maybe I'll have that in the next uh, time I do this talk. Um, so you do a postmortem, um, and you fix some stuff, and you do a new release. And this will not affect your um, release procedure because you'll just have another unfinished build on top of the previous one. You release until you fix the problem, and when you finally have a successful release, the the module will recognize all these unfinished builds and delete those first before it counts successful builds and how many to keep. Right, so the module takes care of that for you a little bit. So it doesn't do rollbacks and um, it also doesn't assume, I told, let's see, I, uh, it doesn't do a maintenance mode because we have no idea what, what, what you're running on. But it's very prudent to have a maintenance mode. Uh, so for example, we use this in production where we add a file before we start the role, for example, and Nginx just, if this file exists, Nginx will not pass the, the request through to PHP. So that's our maintenance mode. And if everything is successful, the maintenance file is deleted automatically. Um, it doesn't do database migrations. I kind of uh, highlighted this as well. But you have the opportunity to place your database migrations wherever you like. Um, well, that's basically what it doesn't do. Uh, and all the rest. Well, anyway, um, <laughs> what's next for this role? Uh, we've s we've seen some stuff coming in um, that was interesting, like the S3 strategy. Um, but we had some of uh, some of our own ideas. Uh, I've seen some cool stuff on uh, on on the Galaxy and other roles. For example, we use the build steps where we where you have a list of commands, but it's really easy to have a include file for tasks. So. That means that you could have your tasks in your own little task uh, uh, file run at a specific time, for example, right after Composer runs inside our role. So we'd prefer deprecating the, the build steps and going for the task includes. Um, this is kind of a, one of the callback things that, that, that uh, Capistrano has. So that's the way we solve the, the callback issue. When you, you know, like the, the events, if you will. Um, we're at this step, and you want to do some of your own stuff, and then continue the role. Um, copying the vendor folder from a previous release. Uh, this speeds up uh, your deployments. Actually, somebody gave us a pull request uh, for that, so that's done. Uh, we're quite happy, because we didn't think of it. Um, let's see. Uh, 
Setting privileges is something that really happens a lot and we didn't cover it and we didn't figure out a way to do it nicely enough. So you could place them in build commands, which we have, but having a task injected will probably also solve this problem because then you could just write a, a little set of tasks that set the right privileges for you. Um, and that will also free up because we use ACLs but there's also, I think, SA Linux and other ways to, to, to set these privileges, and we really don't want to get caught into that trap where we, we choose what people should use. Or, or you have to support them all. Or you have to support them all, which is something we definitely don't want to get into. So, and anything you, can, you guys can think of. Like I said, some stuff was coming in, so we're real happy. It's uh, open source, and anyone can contribute. It copies the vendor folder, it copies the vendor folder, and then runs composer install. Does it look, before it, before it does doing that, does it look to, to the composer the flag file to see if something really nice changed? Well, it will just save you the copy because composer will know if anything has changed. So you just run composer, but having the vendor folder there means that it will not have to either download or copy it from the cache folder for you, um, which uh, kind of speeds up the, the deploy. Um, any more questions? Yeah. So we're, we use Drupal. And um, next question comes up. <laughs> 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 Everyone, please leave the room. Um, <laughs> and I want to build armies. Say I want to build a Drupal plugin for Forward module that um, takes all of the awesome things that you've built and adds some Drupal specific things here and there. Um, imagine this whole question to switching to a synchronous encryption or a LAN mode encryption or, I don't know, yeah. the, the target you use. What would be the um, recommended way to build such a project to the common user? Um. Let's see. This is something we also kind of discovered. We have a module, and modules live inside roles. So we had the deploy uh, project in Ansible Galaxy, and people could use it, but the module was actually inside that role. So you can't use the role or the, 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 the module without also running the role. So the first thing uh, we did when we discovered this like, issue was that we took a separate role, and that only contains the module now. And our deploy role depends on the module. So if you want to write something that doesn't fit, and there are plenty of, of things that won't fit our role, then you write your own role, take from it what you will, because there are probably some stuff that you can copy, and just depend on the module. If the module doesn't fit, um, either pull requests would be cool, or uh, you have the same concept. You write a module, Add it to the galaxy and spread the word because um, if it's if it if it's if it completely overlaps, then we'll you know it won't be very useful. But if it has if it's specific to a certain uh, community and there's some stuff there that is not useful in other communities or just not uh, understandable enough, then it will just be for a single community. But that doesn't really matter though. So if your if the first four steps match and the deploy module matches, then I would recommend just write a role that you can run after our role, depend on our role, and share your role as well. If it has extra variables, for example, to use for specific software, uh, Drupal or Laravel or whatever. So I'm, I'm, not an, I'm not an Ansible guru, so I'm, I might be asking something that's very obvious here. Um, but I like most of what I saw here. Right. Most of the specs are very useful for Drupal sites as well. But there are specific points, and this will probably relate to the future development of the, the whole callback thing. Yeah. Um, where we would want to hook in, like uh, the moment you do um, database syncing, or right before that, you would want to do configuration syncing. So we would want to use a 
Um, basically, yes, because Ansible, if you, use, if you have a role, then if you want to split that up, you'll have to make two roles and place your code in between with a separate role. Or um, You could do some stuff before the role runs with pre-tasks in a playbook or post-tasks after, or you just write a role and then add that before or after. If you want to be in the middle, then the role you're using has to be written specifically with that in mind, which is exactly what I was talking about. We found that having the build steps covers a lot of our demands, but not all of them, which means we have some roles specifically for certain projects because we couldn't make it fit. So the advice would be if it doesn't fit, write your own, but if we can get these uh, tasks to be real easy to, 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 to include and not be uh, a problem, and then we would probably make more of them. Because there's post-build, which means before composer, and uh, so pre-build and post-build, before composer, after composer, or like the, build, uh, the, the dependency managers. And that's basically it. But if this works, then we probably make one for each step. So that will be five, I guess. Uh, depends on... Uh, how well it works and if it gives other issues and if it makes it more complex than necessary. Does that answer your question a bit? I think it does. Thank you. All right. Any more questions? Yeah. How do you configure multiple courses and keep working? And can you just only have one task to uh, run in one server for a simple migration? How do you configure multiple servers to deploy to and for one project? And uh, how do you configure certain tasks only to run on certain uh, hosts? Uh, most of that is Ansible. Um, but that, I think, would also kind of get into the this role doesn't fit part. Um, if you have a bunch of these steps that you want to run on one server, but a bunch of these steps are tasks that you don't, Ansible really doesn't allow you to do that if you don't have the the ability to add, for example, tags to certain um, uh, tasks. So it might be, if we get a lot of questions on this, that we add some ta uh, tags, which means you could configure your way around it. But also, I think this, this gets a little bit in the, in the it doesn't really fit part. And you can take whatever you like um, and just use that, have your own role, um, or make it non-ending because there is no database uh, conf uh, uh, configuration here. So you can make it non-ending uh, so the finalize is false and then write your own role after that that only runs on your specific host. You can also do multiple deploys, right? Yep. I mean, if you have a whole bunch of uh, servers in your inventory, then you run the whole thing for each of those servers, not as one deploy but as various smaller deploys. And then you have to all actually work out the whole thing. Right? Yeah. Well, these are the things that you get, uh, for example, in pre-tasks and, pre and post-tasks. You could do a load balancer, take it out, and put it back in, or, um, and that doesn't really fit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, uh, sorry, the comment was? Arsing some stuff afterwards. Arsing some stuff afterwards, which arse is the word here. Anyway, um, <laughs> um, does that answer your question? Yes, sir, thank you. All right. Any more questions? I'm also, I'm going here, but um, no more questions? Well, thank you very much. Um, feedback on joined in. <laughs> <laughs>